These three I'm going to mention now are the ones that I recommend most often because they rarely cause diarrhea and they are effective. You may not be getting enough in your diet and there are several ways this can happen. Your food may be less nutritious than it used to be. If you eat a lot of processed food, then you may not be getting enough magnesium in your diet. And magnesium is one of the many nutrients that's stripped from your food while it's being processed to make it tastier and more addictive. The water that most of us drink has had the minerals, including magnesium, removed from it. People who drink groundwater are less likely to have low magnesium levels. Even if you're getting enough magnesium in your diet, you may not be absorbing it the way that you should. You need acid in your stomach to absorb magnesium. So anything that decreases stomach acid affects the absorption of magnesium. And this includes drugs like omeprazole, which is used to treat peptic ulcers. If you drink a lot of carbonated, fizzy sodas, soft drinks, that can reduce the absorption of magnesium from your gut. If you have gut issues like celiac disease and chronic diarrhea, your magnesium levels may also be low. Even though you're getting the recommended daily allowance of magnesium, the supply can't keep up with the demand. And several conditions can cause this. You use a lot more magnesium when you're under stress. When you don't get enough sleep, your magnesium requirement increases. If you eat a high sugar diet, you need more magnesium to convert that sugar into energy. So the more sugar you eat, the more magnesium you need. Another way in which you can get low magnesium levels in the body is if you're losing a lot of magnesium. This can take place if you're drinking a lot of coffee and tea because this increases the loss of magnesium in the urine. If you're taking water pills known as diuretics, these stop the kidney from reabsorbing magnesium back into the blood and so you lose more of it in your urine. If you have diabetes and you're passing a lot of urine, you may also be losing a lot of magnesium that way. Common symptoms of low magnesium you may feel tired all the time. You may be anxious and jumpy. You may feel depressed. You may have difficulty falling asleep. And when you do get to sleep, you just keep waking up throughout the night. You may have leg cramps, particularly at night. You may have palpitations where you can feel your heart pounding in your chest. You may have raised blood pressure and you may have raised blood sugar. So what does magnesium do? Magnesium is a helper, a cofactor in over 300 chemical reactions in your body. So let's imagine that you accidentally slam your finger in the door. What's going to happen? First of all, of course, you'll feel pain. Your finger may swell up. It will feel warmer than the surrounding area. It will change color. It might become reddish or purple and you won't be able to use that finger. These are signs of acute inflammation. Imagine that this process is going on all over your body all the time at low levels. This is low grade chronic inflammation. And a lot of the modern diseases that we're suffering from these days are linked to chronic low-grade inflammation. That would include Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, asthma, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, type 2 diabetes. Magnesium is anti-inflammatory. It helps to calm down inflammation. Some of the medication that you might be taking for high blood pressure help your blood vessels to relax and magnesium does the same thing. Relaxation of blood vessels increases blood flow to vital organs in the body and this helps them to function better because they get more nutrients and more oxygen. Magnesium helps the heart to maintain a normal rhythm. Magnesium has a relaxing effect on the brain and it helps to relieve anxiety and helps with sleep. Magnesium also has a relaxing effect on the muscles and this can be very helpful in leg cramps. Increasing your magnesium levels can help to bring down your blood sugar and can also help to reduce insulin resistance in pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Most of the magnesium in your body is in your bones and inside your cells and only about 1% of this is in your blood. So you may get a normal result when you test for magnesium in the blood and still have low levels inside your tissues. Seeing as supplementing with magnesium within the recommended daily allowance is quite safe for most people, one way to assess deficiency would be to supplement with magnesium and see if your symptoms improve. How do you increase magnesium levels in the body? Avoid processed food, packaged food that's had all the nutrients stripped away from it. Eat more natural food that's rich in magnesium like seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds. You can eat cashews, black beans, spinach and other dark green 
leaves. Coconut milk and coconut water are also good sources of magnesium. If it's possible to avoid taking drugs like omeprazole, which interfere with magnesium absorption, then you could do that. You can avoid fizzy drinks, sodas, all these carbonated drinks. That will help a lot. Eat less sugar. That's good for everything so that you don't need as much magnesium. Try and reduce your stress levels and get more sleep. And this will help to reduce the chronic inflammation and your magnesium requirements will come down. And if you can, limit the amount of tea and coffee that you drink every day. Magnesium supplements. The recommended daily allowance for magnesium for men is about 460 milligrams and for women it's about 360. I always recommend that you get your minerals, your vitamins, your antioxidants and all those nutrients from natural wholesome food as much as possible. Now in order to get your recommended daily allowance of magnesium you would need to eat about three quarters of a cup of pumpkin seeds, two and a half cups of cooked spinach, seven avocados, three and a half cups of black beans, ten tablespoons of flax seeds, six ounces of cashew nuts that's about 180 grams and five ounces of almonds which would be about 150 grams. Supplementing with magnesium is quite safe for most people but of course you should consult your doctor especially if you have any other health issues. And signs of magnesium overdose can include nausea, diarrhea, low blood pressure, muscle weakness, fatigue and your heart may stop beating altogether. There are many different types of magnesium supplements on the market and for it to be useful that magnesium has to be in a form that your body can actually absorb and use. A prime example is magnesium oxide. If you're trying to treat constipation, magnesium oxide is great. If you want to increase your magnesium levels and you're taking magnesium oxide, you are wasting your time. You're basically flushing your money down the toilet. You're better off spending a little bit more money to buy the kind of magnesium that your body can actually absorb and use. So let's go through some of the different kinds of magnesium that you may come across. Magnesium oxide, we've talked about that. Total waste of time for supplementation. Magnesium citrate. This is quite well absorbed and it's cheap but it may cause diarrhea. Magnesium orotate, promoted to help athletic performance but I can't really see any evidence for that. And you may also come across magnesium lactate which isn't bad either. These three I'm going to mention now are the ones that I recommend most often because they rarely cause diarrhea and they are effective. Magnesium glycinate, this is great for everything including sleep and leg cramps. Magnesium taurate, this might be slightly more helpful if you have high blood pressure abnormal heart rhythms and palpitations. Magnesium 3 and 8. This is a little bit pricier than the other forms of magnesium but it may work better in the brain. I like to avoid fillers and bulking agents and additives as much as possible in my supplements so I actually use a magnesium glycinate powder and I put that into capsules because it tastes absolutely foul on its own. I also have magnesium taurate. And to find out about some of the best supplements to bring down blood sugar watch this next video.